Hey everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Chart.js within your React.js websites. The goal of this video is to show you all of the common use cases for Chart.js and also show you how you can navigate their documentation so you can then figure out how to use Chart.js to its full potential within your own use case. So to get started, I'm going to open up my console and if you already have a React application you want to work with, then feel free to skip to the next section using the YouTube player. However, if you don't have a React application, we're going to go ahead and make one now. Within our console, I can run npx create react app, and then we can put a space and then name our project. Mine is going to be chart.js, but you can name yours whatever you want. You can then press enter, and this might take a few minutes depending on your internet and computer speed, so go ahead and pause the video and come back whenever it's done. Mine is now done installing. I can then navigate into my folder with cd chart.js. I can then navigate into VS Code by opening it with my command line. If you open up your text editor in a different way, feel free to do that, of course. Now that we're here, we can go ahead and run our app with npm run start. This will automatically open it in your default browser. So here we see this. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to minimize my console, but I'm going to keep this process open so we will automatically rebuild our React application whenever we make changes. So we can minimize this and we can go into our source directory. There's a lot of files in here that aren't going to be relevant for this video. So we're going to go ahead and delete those. One is a setup test.js. We can also delete service worker.js, the logo, index.css, app test.js. And then we can go inside of our index.js and we're going to make some changes because some of these imports no longer exist, such as index.css and the service worker. Now that we're no longer importing the service worker, we want to delete all of it down here. So your index should look something like this. We can then save this and then go inside of our app.js. We are importing the logo here, which we no longer want to do. I'm actually going to delete the entire component, leaving us with just a couple import statements. I can then say const app equals an anonymous error function, and then we can return some JSX. For example, I can just say div hello world, and then we have to export this with export default app. We can go ahead and save this, and then going back into Chrome, we should see our updates right here. So we see hello world on the screen, so everything is working. Going back into VS Code, I'm gonna go inside my source directory and I'm going to make a new folder. This will be called components. And within here, I'm going to right click and make a new file. This one is going to be called barchart.js. This is gonna be the first chart example that I'll be teaching you today. So to start off, I'm just gonna make a very simple functional component. We can import React from React. And then I can say const bar chart equals an anonymous error function. We can then return some JSX, which in this case will just be a div that says bar chart. We can then export this with export default bar chart. We can save the file, and then we can go into our app.js. We can go ahead and import this. I like to separate my local imports, so I'm going to add in a space from the actual React import. I can then say import bar chart from components forward slash bar chart. Now that we have access to this, within this div, instead of saying hello world, I'm going to go ahead and use this bar chart component that we just imported. We can then save this, and going back into Chrome, we now see bar chart, which means that we are correctly importing our component. Going back into the bar chart file, we now want to actually use chart.js. So how do we do that? Well, if we go back into Chrome, we can go to the React chart.js2 npm package, and a link to this will be in the video description. We're wanting to install this. So I can go into my console and I can press control C in order to stop the process. We can scroll down to installation via NPM. We can copy this entire thing, which will install React chart.js2 as well as chart.js. We can copy that and right click in the console and go ahead and run that. Once it's done, we might want to start our app again. So I can press up a couple times and run NPM run start. This will likely open up a new tab. So I'll go ahead and close the old one. And if we go back into the NPM tab, we can scroll down and we see usage right here. So we can import specific chart types from React Chart JS2. In this case, this is a donut chart. We also see this data property here. So if we go into the properties table, we see a bunch of different information we can pass in, such as the data, the width, the height, and more information. If we scroll down further, we then see an example for the bar chart. We can pass in the data, the width, and the height, and we're going to do just that. So let's go back into our bar chart file. I'm going to minimize my console to make more room. We can then import something from React Chart.js2. And the reason why I didn't specify anything within this object is because we can hold control space and it's going to give us examples of what we can import. 
Here we see a bunch of different chart types. We're wanting to import a bar chart, which is already selected, so we can just click on it. And now we can go ahead and use this. So inside this div, instead of saying bar chart, I'm going to then use the bar component. And like the documentation suggested, we can pass in a height and a width. So my height will be 400 pixels, and my width will be 600. Of course, you can add in whatever values you want here. We also can pass in a data object, and we're going to create two curly braces, the first one representing dynamic JavaScript content, the second one representing an actual JavaScript object. So what do we actually pass within this object? Well, if we go back to the official documentation, and we go to Get Started, this red button right here, we could then go to Usage on the left, and here we see creating a chart, but if we scroll down, we see an example of an actual use case. Here we see a Canvas HTML5 element, and so this is going to assume a vanilla JavaScript website development environment. However, we're going to be using the npm package, but the actual chart information is going to be the same. Here we see this data object, so everything within this object will be what we're covering within this video, and I'll be explaining what all these things do. But here we see this type property right here, and this is going to be set to bar. We don't actually have to worry about that because in our use case, the bar component is going to handle that for us. We just have to pass on the data object and then we're good to go. So let's go back over here. And the first thing within data is going to be labels. When it comes to a bar chart, these will be the things at the bottom of the chart that will represent each individual column. So for simplicity, I'm going to be using the same exact example as this documentation. I'll try not to copy and paste everything, but there will be some things such as the colors and the labels that I will be copy and pasting. And also a link to this page can be found in the video description. Of course, when following along, you can use your own data, but that's up to you. So let's go ahead and copy this array. And I'm going to try and only copy the values because it's an important practice to type out as much code as possible because it makes it easier for you to remember it. So going back into VS Code, we can then say labels is going to be an array. We can then paste in the actual strings. If I save this, it should restart our app. And going back into our website, we now see this chart here, but there's no actual visuals. There's no data. We do see a Y axis here and an X axis, which does have the labels that we specified. However, we now see the scroll bar here, so let's get rid of that. Going back into VS Code, underneath our width, we can add in options, which is going to be its own object. So we're going to have two curly braces here. We can then say maintain aspect ratio is going to be false. We can save this. Going back into Chrome, we now see that we no longer have a scroll bar, and it's going to take up the entire width. So this is another property that we see right here. So options maintain aspect ratio is false. And we're going to be adding more things within the options data later on. So going back into React.js, we now have this chart that we can see. Let's go ahead and add some data to it. Going to the documentation, we now see data sets, which is going to be collections of objects that represent certain data value. In this array here, we have one single object. And there's a few different properties it shows. For example, the label, the actual data values, the colors, and we can specify one color for all the data values, or we can specify multiple colors as well as multiple border colors. And it's going to pair up the first data value with the first color, the second data value with the second color, etc. So let's create an array of data sets that has one object. Going back into VS Code, within data underneath labels, we can say data sets. It's going to be an array where there's one object inside. We see that there is a label. In this case, it is number of votes. So we can say label is number, whoops, number of votes. And then underneath that, we then have data, which is going to be these specific values, which I will copy for this. So data will be this array. And we can go ahead and save our application. We can go back into React app. And we now see some type of data here where chart is up to 12. And hovering over it, we get this cool tooltip that animates and moves around. We also see yellow, green, purple, orange, and blue. However, there's no actual color here. So we can change that as you see right here. We can use RGBA, we can use certain hex colors, we can also use the standard colors such as green, blue, etc. So a quick example, because the first one is red, we can then say background color is going to be an array, but the first one is going to be red. We can save this and go back into our app, and we see that only the first one is red. This is what happens when you pass in an array to here, instead of just a single string, such as red, I then save this, it'll use that color for all of the bars. So here we see all of them are red. So going back, we can convert this back into an array, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the values for the background colors. Of course, you can customize these. We've got red, green, blue, and the level of transparency. We can then save this and going back into our application, 
we now see actual colors for each one. Going to the documentation, we also see border color. So I can copy these values, and then going back into VS Code, underneath background color, we can say border color, and this is going to be an array, where we can then pass this in. And if you notice there, there was a lot of options when I was typing that. So if I go to the next line after border color and hold control and press space, we have a lot of different options. Bar percentage, bar thickness, border or line. We can scroll down, and there's a lot of things we can do to customize this. Oops, went a little too far. We have certain access IDs, we have the type, step line, stack. There's plenty of options here. I'm not going to be going over all of them within this video. However, I will be showing you how you can figure out what each of these do within the documentation. But let's continue back to our example. The last property within the example here is the border width is one. So we can specify that as well, border width is one. We can save this and going back to our application. We now see this border around here. And if we were to change this to 10, for example, we're going to see a much larger border. So we can go back, change that to one. And then if we go back to the documentation and we scroll down, we now see options. So one thing you see here is that the two is the lowest right here. And if we hover over purple, that's how many votes purple has. However, it's not displaying anything. And we can fix this by starting our chart at zero. So if we go back, we see options, we see scales, X axis, X begin at zero. So let's go ahead and type this out just so we get more familiar with the code. So we got a scales object, which then contains a Y axis. So going back into options, we could then say scales, it's going to be an object with Y axis being an array of objects. And we see that the first object is just going to contain a ticks property, which is its own object that contains begin at zero is true. So we can then add in an object. We can then say ticks, it's going to be its own object with a begin at zero is true. We can then save this and going back to our application, we then see zero at the bottom here, and we now see actual data for purple. So this is a basic example of a bar chart, but what happens if we add in multiple data sets? One thing to keep in mind is that if you click on the legend up here or the key, we can actually toggle on and off certain data sets. And so let's quickly add in another example. Let's go back into VS Code. Scrolling up, we see data sets with this array. We see this one object right here. But at the bottom of this, I'm going to make another object. We can then have a label and we can call this quantity. This is going to be how many of these are there. Now, this doesn't really make too much sense because we're apparently voting on some color. However, just as an example, we're just going to say how many of some item are actually there. So what's next after a label? We have our actual data. And how many of these do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can add in six different numbers. So our data will be an array. We can say 100, 104, 67, 508, 950. So added whatever you want, of course. Going back up, we then see background color. And these are going to be a bunch of different colors. We also see border color and border width. However, when it comes to this, I'm going to keep it simple with background color just being orange. We can also say border color can be red. This might not look the best, but it's just an example. So we can save this going back into our application. We now see these really tall orange bars, but our previous bars are super small. So why is that? Well, we only have 12 votes for red, 19 votes for blue, but we have 900 purple. So because of that, our graph gets really tall and our data values are really short when it comes to the previous data set. So to change that, we can go back, we can minimize some of these. Let's just say 58 and nine. Let's also say instead of 100, we can say 47 and 52. Let's save this, let's go back. And now we see the actual data sets for both. Now, let's say we want to disable the quantity. We click on that, it will automatically have an animation that will, will fill the rest of the chart with the existing data. We can also disable the number of votes here. And so this is a very basic bar chart. Let's go back to the official documentation and we can scroll down and there's a bunch of options here. We can eventually see charts where there's a line, a bar, radar, and a bunch of other ones. Let's go ahead and check out line charts real quick. And so they'll look like this. We can scroll down, we have our data, we have our options, so the type is line. As we know from the library we're using, we are importing bar from React Chart JS2. Let's also import line. We can then delete the bar import. We can also rename bar right here to line. We can then save this, and going back into our application, we now see a line chart. It looks, looks very different. Here we see the number of votes and the quantity, and if I disable those, we're then going to see the number of votes that's going to move up and down. So this type of chart would obviously make more sense with something that's clearly very linear, so something that happens every day and tracking data over a certain number of days. 
but this is just an example. Let's go back and I'm going to show you one more example. So here we see donut and pie. We can click on this and we get this type of thing here. So this is technically a donut chart because there's a hole in the middle. We can scroll down. We see the type is pie and the type is donut. So we can very easily change these. So for example, instead of line, we can then import pie. And then instead of line here, we can import pie. If I save this and go back, we now see a pie chart. However, this looks a little weird because of this second data set here. If we go back into our code and we scroll down and we comment out the second data set. We can then save this, and go back, and it looks a little better here. We can also disable certain ones and it's going to automatically move the pie chart around to only show the remaining data sets. We can hover over these to see the different data values here. And so this is going to be how you're going to use a pie chart. So at this point, I'm fairly sure you have a good idea of how to use the basics. Let's dive more into the documentation so you can see how to find certain aspects you're looking for, and also some examples of the differences between the official Chart.js documentation and the React Chart.js 2 NPM package. So going over here, we're currently on Donut and Pie Chart example. We can scroll up, we see configuration, we can scroll further, we see general. And so let's take a look at some of these options here. Let's click on fonts, for example. Here we see options, legend, which is going to be this thing at the top. We can actually adjust the font color. If we scroll down, we can also adjust certain other things, such as the font size. Let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to add in legend, which is its own object, and then labels, which is its own object. And then we can add in font size. Keep in mind that here we have font color, which is this right here. And so whenever we're passing this into the actual labels object, we don't have to include default. So we're going to include font size, and we're going to set that to something crazy like two pixels, and then we'll try 70 pixels, and we'll see what that looks like. Going back into VS Code, we can scroll down to our options, and then after scales, so I'll click on the opening curly brace and then know where the ending curly brace is. We can then add in legend, which is its own object, and then labels, and then font size can be two. We can then save this and go back into here, and we can barely see the text. I'm not sure if you can see this in the recording, but if I scroll in, we can actually see it right there. So if I scroll back out, let's now try changing this to 200, for example. And if I save this, we then see these giant things here. Obviously, this doesn't make too much sense to do, but it's just an example that this is actually working. So I'm going to go back and change this to 25. Now this is more reasonable. We can go back and, of course, we can change other things, but I'm sure you get the idea. Let's go take a look at a few more things. So let's scroll down. Let's say under configuration, we go to tooltip. We can then see chart.defaults.global.tooltips. And the chart.default object is going to be something that's used frequently within this documentation. But we have to use it slightly differently when it comes to the actual NPM package. So going over here, if we do a search for default, we then see chart.js defaults where we're importing defaults and then we're assigning some things here. Let's go ahead and do that. Inside VS Code, at the top, instead of just importing pi, we can also import defaults. And then going back, let's see what we can change here. We have defaults.global.tooltips. Whatever this is. So let's say enabled. This is a Boolean. By default, is true. And this is the actual hovering effect that you see when it comes to the actual value and the name. So, for example, blue is 19, red is 12. That's the tooltip. Let's say that we want to disable that. So now that we have this imported, let's go back into the documentation. And we see we can access defaults.global.something and assign a value there. This is something we can do above our class. And so we are looking for enabled. So above our bar chart class or functional component, I should say, we can say defaults.global.tooltips.enabled equals false. If I save this and I go back into my application, when I hover over them, nothing actually happens. That's an example of how to use the default values that you'll often see within the documentation. We can also look at legend here. We see defaults global legend. We see position, which is top. We can click on more here and it scrolls us down. So let's say we want the legend to be at the bottom of the chart. Well, we can just specify bottom for this property. If we scroll back up, this is going to be defaults.global.legend.position. So defaults.global.legend.position equals bottom. We can then save this and going back into our application. Now the legend is below the chart on the bottom. Obviously, you can use left and right as well. But that's it for this video. If this helped you, then please consider liking and subscribing. If you do need help with anything, then feel free to ask the Warnoff Keys Discord server. The link to that will be in the description and the pinned comment. You can ask your questions there. Thanks for watching.